Hey, everybody, welcome to this web stream about prophetic warnings for the season that we're in. You know, you've heard me and so many of my guests share this entire year about the epic, the historic, the biblical days that we're in. And what a blessing it is to have been handpicked by God to be here now for all that he has planned. We've been sharing prophetic words with you, prophetic insights. We've been sharing discernments about the times and the opportunities that we have in Christ, with Christ, and for Christ. Today, what I wanted to focus on, though, is with those opportunities, there's often comes warnings because God not only wants to share with us what he has for us to walk in, he not only wants to share his tips, his techniques, his strategies, his tactics, his blueprints, his battle plans to help us walk in the fullness he has for us in these seasons, but he also has warnings. He not only gets us on the right path, he helps keep us off the wrong paths because we don't ever have to be afraid of the enemy, but it'd be foolish to not be aware of the enemy. And sometimes I think we confuse those two things. Sometimes we think, oh, I don't want to give the enemy any heed. But if the enemy has laid traps for us along the way, think of them as landmines in the spirit. Wouldn't you want somebody to say, oh, don't step there, don't step there, avoid there? Well, that's one of the things Holy Spirit does when he gives us these prophetic warnings. It's to keep us on track, but to keep us away from the traps of the enemy. And again, we don't have to be afraid because one of Holy Spirit's ministries is to lead us into all truth. And he's much more able to lead us in truth than the enemy is to trap us in deception or get us off track. But one of the ways Holy Spirit leads us in truth is sharing these warnings, sharing these prophetic revelations about here are the traps the enemy's laying in this season. Don't go there. So that's what this is about, because as we always say, you matter, you're important. And you've got a key role to play for the kingdom in the earth. That's why you're here. God has handpicked you to be here now as being one of his difference makers and solution bringers for the hour that we're in. So what I want to do now is I want to bring in my two guests. Benjamin Dietrich, going wonderful to see you, my friend. So good to be here. What an honor, Robert. Thanks for taking time to join us. And Ryan Johnson, a, a longtime frequent guest of uh, my web streams. Always great to have you with us. So good to be with the both of you. Well, I appreciate you guys taking time, especially for this topic, because you're both very prophetic. You both regularly hear from the word, Lord, carry the word of the Lord for seasons. But you also both have that shepherd heart that sort of pastoral aspect where you not only carry the warnings, but you carry it within the heart of the Father. And that's one of the things that I really think is important in any season where there's a lot of warning words or there's corrective words or there's watchman words is that they're carried with the heart of God. Because even if it's a heavy warning or a heavy correction, it's not to destroy man but to save man. So Benjamin, even before we started uh, recording this, you were sharing something the Lord was talking to you about you, about why there are even warnings. You heard what I shared about, it's part of how Holy Spirit keeps us, from, keeps us on the track of truth. But I loved what you were sharing because it really showed the wisdom and heart of God in these seasons when he's giving warnings. Mm, thank you, Robert. Yeah, I was just sharing with, with my brothers here and I uh, want to share with those who are watching that uh, somebody I pastored for 10 and a half years in various capacities in Michigan uh, with a great woman named Apostle Barbara Yoder. And one of the things that happens when you pastor is people say all kinds of things to you. You know, they have good intentions and they have questions. And one person asked me one day, they, well, they didn't ask me, actually, they made a statement. And they said, you were sharing in your message about a prophetic warning the, gave, the Lord gave you. And they said, you know, that's Old Testament. God doesn't do that anymore. That's not New Testament. That's not New Covenant. And I just want to correct you. And I said, you know, brother, thank you so much for your heart to keep me on the straight and narrow and, and, you know, lead me in truth. But let me share something with you. And what I shared with them is what I'll share here with us today, that a good father warns their children. You know, I have three girls, uh, the loves of my life, my little princesses, they're ages 10 to three. And we like to go to the Atlantic Ocean. We're from the East Coast. I'm from the East Coast. They lived most of their life on the East Coast. Now we're in the great state of Arizona. 
with amazing people here. But we love to go to the Atlantic Ocean. It's one of my favorite places. It's where God really speaks to me. I hear the voice of the Lord in the water. You know, the, the Bible says that his voice is like the sound of many waters. And we were there one time. Actually, Sophia, my youngest, wasn't even born. And my daughter, Faith, was going deeper and deeper and deeper. And she was with me and all of that. And she was six at the time. And she said, you know, Daddy, I'm a big girl now. And I can go into the water myself. And I said, okay, well, I'll watch you and I'll be right here as you do that. But she, she said, well, I'm going to go deeper and deeper. And I said, you know, honey, I'm warning you that the deeper you go, the worse it will be for you. And so she, being six, did what every six-year-old would do. She went deeper and deeper and deeper. And thank God I didn't actually let her go by herself. But I released that warning from my heart to my daughter, not because... I was judging her or because she was annoying to me or because I was angry at her or anything that people say when they say that this isn't New Testament, that because it's not the nature of our father, it is the nature of our father in heaven. He's the good father. He's even better than we are. I mean, his fathering dwarfs our fathering every time. And so at times, the father, the father of our souls will release warnings because as a good father, he wants to make sure that we're safe. We're walking in health. We're walking in wholeness. And that's the foundation from which we're talking today about these prophetic warnings is not because of anger or wrath or anything like that. It's because of the love of the father that wants to keep us in the path that he has for us and wants us to be all that we can be in him and be as effective as we can be for the kingdom. Yeah, amen to that. It's something we pray for. Jesus told us, pray, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. One of the ways we get led not into temptation is we're told, here's what the temptation is, avoid it. Ryan Johnson, what are your thoughts on this? It is difficult. You know, as a, a father, I've got four kids. Two of them are, are grown, they're adults, and two of them are still coming up in age they're 16 and 11 and i understand exactly what benjamin is saying and it's it, it is given the thought before that a loving father will not condemn his sons or daughters but he will bring correction and i think a lot of times the reason that people feel like god is potentially condemning them or he is uh, bringing this harsh judgment against them in the natural and in the spiritual side of it is because in reality, they haven't dealt with the orphan mentality that a lot of them carry. Whereas as sons and daughters of God, we will be able to recognize, okay, God is tweaking this, or he's correcting that, or he's bringing about the alignment of this. And I think what's interesting, I go back to Benjamin saying that guy said, I just wanted to correct you. That's an interesting statement for me because we're in a generation right now, and, and this is where I say we have to be warned. We're in a generation where we feel like it's, ever, it's our responsibility to bring about correction to the things in which we disagree with or those that we might disagree with. And what we have to be careful in doing this is, I, I've said it this way, correction without relationship brings anarchy. Mm -hmm. it, it, it brings an, an atmosphere of chaos. Now, if I have a relationship, and that man may have had a great relationship with Benjamin when he was pastoring at that time, I'm not discrediting that. What I'm saying is the culture that we have, we're wanting to correct everything that takes us out of our comfort zone, quote unquote. We love to say that about our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. But I believe that the father is actually challenging Every one of us, me included, I do not believe that God is trying to bring you out of your comfort zone. I believe the correction is to get you out of your complacency and bring you into a place of comfort. We call it a comfort zone. But the reality is that's where we find in which we don't do anything for God because God's not going to stretch me. If I don't do anything for me, for him, he can't correct me. If I don't do anything, I can't get judgment. If I don't do anything, I don't get condemnation. I don't get all these things, so I become complacent, but I call it a comfort zone. Holy wow. Spirit is called comforter. Wow. God's not trying to pull you out of your comfort zone. God's trying to pull you out of complacency to show you as a father – and his spirit through his son as well can get you into a place where you're comforted. There's something about that young child in the way that a loving father corrects them. They actually find comfort. Now, yeah. at first, there is that contention. You know, if, if 
we grew up with fathers like mine. My father said, you know, before he brought on the hand of judgment, he said, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. Well, I countered that one day and said, okay, let's switch roles. <laughs> that doesn't work. I, I want to say that to everybody. But at the moment, it did not comfort me. As a father right now, because of years of having a relationship with my earthly father, I understand now that I found comfort in that because I had a father that cared enough to bring about correction. Mm -hmm. See, we're trying to be this continual generation that doesn't want to be warned. They don't want to be corrected. They don't want to be confronted mm -hmm. because they want to be able to define it. One thing when really God is trying to stretch us and grow us. The warning is not the punishment. That's not the warning. Right. Right. The warning is not the punishment of the assignment that God has for you. The warning is the ability to say, I love you so much, as Benjamin was saying to his daughter, I'm not going to let harm come, so I'm going to warn you. But if I didn't love you, then the consequences would be up to you, but then you'd be mad at me. And that's where so much of the country, culture is. And I genuinely believe so many of us, we need to understand that God is calling us into a place of comfort because Holy Spirit is comforter. So, Amen. You know, I mean, when you put it so well, Ryan, that Holy Spirit's comfort, you remind us of that. He is our comfort zone. And so you want to talk about comfort. I mean, I think of this as the warnings of God. You're right. Warnings aren't punishment. Warnings aren't even correction. Warnings aren't even discipline. And if our God loves us enough to discipline us, why wouldn't he warn us so we don't even need the discipline? And if we think about like what God is warning us about is there's bear traps laid for you in the spirit by the tempter. I'm letting you know what they are and where they are so you don't step into them. And you want to talk about comfort. You know what's comfortable? Not stepping into a bear trap. <laughs> Being in a bear trap is not comfortable. The comfort zone is not stepping into the bear trap. So if there's one in front of you, tell me. This is a silly example, but what came to mind when you were sharing, Ryan, was one of the, the first hike I did almost every spring in when I lived in Montana was I'd go up Mount Aeneas. It was one of the lower peaks. It was an easy hike. Um, when the snow began to melt, you could get up there. And if you timed it right, the snow would have melted on the backside. And um, all the wildflowers were in bloom. And it was absolutely breathtaking. So I, I would go up to Mount Aeneas every spring. But you know what? The first time I ever did that, a buddy of mine said, hey, you're going up Aeneas tomorrow. One thing to be aware of, when the trail splits, you're going to want to go up to the left because it, it goes up. It goes up. And you know you still have a lot of up to go. But soon after it goes up, it dips back down and takes you back down. You actually want to go to the right, the trail that dips it first and goes down, because then it goes up. If you just go with what looks and makes sense to you, you're going to end up back in the valley and not get to the peak. And I took that hike so many times. I always remembered that. And anybody I told about the hike that I couldn't go on it with, I gave them the same insight the same warning why to help keep them on track so they could come into and see what they wanted to see that's what these prophetic warnings are from god they're a way that he blesses us serves us keep us keeps us on track so with that in mind that we've kind of settled that yes god does give warnings because he loves because he cares because he wants to keep us on track you can hear even more from Benjamin, from Ryan, from myself, and from the amazing Sergio Scataglini, a, a powerful Argentinian revivalist, and an event we're doing October 14th and 15th. It's our Heroes Arise Southwest 2022 event, and this event is called Words of Fire because God has promised us that through Sergio, through myself, through Ryan, through Benjamin, through Francisco Arboleda, through Dustin Williams and surprise guests that we have, he's going to speak with words Words of fire, and he's going to be like a burning bush in our midst. This is a men's event. This is our Southwest men's event for the year. So men, you don't want to miss this because part of God's promise as he speaks with words of fire in the worship, in the messages, in the ministry, in the fellowship time, is he is going to use that fire to free you, fuel you, and further you in all that you've been created for and all that you're called to. This is a time of acceleration. This is a time of things that have been dead or dormant being brought back to life and reactivated. And you want to be there to receive these words of fire. So join us October 14th and 15th right here in Maricopa, Arizona. 
You can go to menonthefrontlines.com and click the events link to find out more. Or if you have any questions, email me, robert at menonthefrontlines.com or robert at roberthotchkin.com. Thanks so much for being with us for this session of Prophetic Warnings. Go out there and do great things for the kingdom of God.